Good evening, church. I hope you are having an incredible day, and we finally got some snow. As I'm recording this, there's only a couple inches outside, but uh, they assured me there's supposed to be more coming. So when you're watching this, hopefully you've gotten some snow, uh, you're staying safe, uh, you're staying warm, but at least it isn't sub-zero temperatures, and we're praying that you have your water back on. So if you do not or are still struggling, please let the church know. We will see what we can do to help uh, you get through this time. You're a part of our family. We want to help. Just let us know. We'll do the best we can. Well, let's get right into the Word tonight. Uh, I know I'm getting ready to take off, which is super exciting. God's doing a lot of incredible things around here, and I'm definitely going to miss you guys, but I tell you this, I will do what I can to send you guys some videos from, from Thailand as we go, and we're building uh, a church over there. So here we go, Luke 17. Turn with me to Luke 17. It says this, Jesus said to his disciples, oops, I'm in the NIV. That's fine. I'll read out the NIV today. Uh, Jesus said to his disciples, things that cause people to stumble are bound to come. But woe to anyone through whom they come. There's this idea that there's always going to be obstacles in our way. I think about even this thought of how we deal with life as it comes at us. Last year I talked about the word rejoice and yeah, I felt like there was lots of uh, stumbling blocks that came. This year we have the word of sustained uh, to just to kind of keep going. But he says, you need to know this, that stumble, uh, uh, things that cause people to stumble, they're bound to come. It's going to happen. But woe to anyone through who they come. So there's going to be natural stumbling blocks that come in our path and in our way and that we have to figure out how to deal with those. But there's also, you know what, there's stumbling blocks that people put in front of others that cause others to sin, that cause others to stumble, to cause others to fall. And he says this, woe uh, but woe to anyone through who they, uh, through whom they come. So we have to be very careful that we are not the ones putting stumbling blocks in front of other people. It says this in verse two: It would be better for them to be thrown into the sea with a millstone tied around their neck than to cause one of these little ones to stumble. Little ones, uh, we th we think of, of children is a, is a great example, but also I think of God's children uh, is, is 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 also I believe who He's talking about here. Listen, if when people come, Pharisees uh, and the religious leaders and other outside influence, if they cause the children of God to stumble, to sin, it says it'd be better that they just put a millstone around their neck and they were tossed into the sea. And he says this, so watch yourselves. I think the key to all this is being aware of what's, there are stumbling blocks that are coming. There are going to be distractions that are coming. The enemy is going to continue to put different things in your path and in your way that are going to keep you from wanting to uh, go where God wants you to go. But don't be afraid. Uh, just understand and realize that these things are coming. And he says this, if your brother or sister sins against you, rebuke them. And if they repent, forgive them. Even if they sin against you seven times in a day and seven times come back to you saying, I repent, you must forgive them. Now, this is, this is one of these tough, tough verses for us to really just ponder. We think about this. He's talking about if your brother or sister, if people who uh, serve Christ with you, people in our church, if they come to you and they say, man, I'm sorry, I, I messed up again. It says we're required. We're it's, it's our obligation. We must forgive them. Now, I don't know if you've ever had to forgive somebody and, and, and then they come back and they do it again and you're like, did you really, are, are, you, are you even repentive? Did you truly repent? Because you just keep saying you're sorry, but then you keep going back and doing it. So how do I, am I, Jesus says, man, we, we still have to repent. He says, they come back seven times, you must say it. He even goes on to say another, another passage, 70 times seven, right? And you just keep going. He's, but look at what the response says. The apostle said, Lord, increase our faith. Do you know it's difficult to forgive people, especially if they've hurt you? It's difficult to forgive people like if, if they keep just not changing. But see, forgiveness isn't about us or isn't about them, about fixing them. Forgiveness is about us being freed. And so when you forgive someone, it, it, it releases kind of your responsibility and obligation to it. It's kind of on them. It's almost like if you take and you want to help someone out and you go and, and you give them, all right, here, here's a hundred bucks. And, and then you say, you know what you should do? You should actually take that money. You should invest it. You should purchase this thing. You should, no. If the Lord tells you to give, then you give and whatever they do with it is on them. It's kind of the same thing when we forgive people. We say, 
all right, I forgive you. It's released, but it's in your hands now. This is on you. I'm not going to keep, I'm not going to micromanage anything, but listen, I've already done what God's called me to do. You need to do what God has called you to do. And, and the apostles, because I think like a lot of us would say, um, that's, 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 that's not happening. That's too difficult. And it says, Lord, we need you to increase our faith. Lord, strengthen us. Give us the strength to forgive because really it releases us in that burden and that hurt and that pain that we have from whoever has wronged us. So we need to forgive. And he says this. He replied, verse 6, If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, Be uprooted and planted by the sea, and it will obey you. So now we begin to talk about, it only takes faith, like just a little tiny, uh, very little physical amount of faith to actually make things move. That you could move mountains. And he's saying, listen, we need our faith increased, uh, not in a physical, but in, 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 in a spiritual sense to say, Lord, I need you to help me overcome these things. I need you to help me forgive this. You know, I may be struggling forgiving. I may be struggling to be able to do what I think is impossible. Lord, increase our faith. What a great prayer. I think about this because the disciples realized their struggles that they had with just forgiving or being able to forgive. And, and he's saying, Lord, increase our faith. Suppose one of you has a servant plowing or looking after the sheep. Will he say to the servant when he comes in the field, hey, come along now and sit down to eat? This is, this is really interesting. Won't he rather say, prepare my supper, get yourself ready and wait on me while I eat and drink, after that, you may eat and drink. Now, in today's culture and society, we'd say, man, that is, that's unfair. That's wrong. That just seems that's un- inappropriate. What? He's been outside working the whole time and doing all this work, and, and now he comes in and he's like, yeah, hey, hurry up and make me my dinner so I can eat. <laughs> Forget, right? He says, will he thank the servant because he did what he was told to do? Verse 10, so you also, when you have done everything you were told to do, should say, we are unworthy servants. We have only done our duty. I think about this. What has God called us to do? We serve God. As believers, we, we, we trust in him, we believe in him, and we do what he says based on his word. And it shouldn't be, okay, well now, we've done our part, God. Now you need to go, go and make us dinner. No, we, we, we serve him. We get this beautiful, um, you know, we talk about the kingdom of God. We talk about that we get to serve him and he protects us and, and he blesses us and he watches over us. And he's this fair uh, God and this fair king in this kingdom. And, and it might even relate to, you know, working for someone. If, if you have a great boss and you enjoy going to work and you love working for your boss, then, then you do above and beyond and extra. But it's because you, you enjoy uh, your boss, and you know that he's going to take care of you. But if you work for a boss that is kind of unfair, or I've worked for bosses before that, you know what, I left due to their integrity because I didn't believe in what they were doing. And so th- those are the things that, yeah, that would be unfair, but h- here it is. It's, it's, it's not our job to try to get something out of it. We don't serve God to say, yeah, so, so I can get these things, or if I do this, then you know, he'll, he'll give me all these things. We do it because we love him. And we, we can love him when, when our faith grows. And we say, Lord, increase our faith. So now I desire to serve and continue to worship you and, and do what you've called us to do. Now on his way, let's keep going, verse 11. I just want to get a few more verses here. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. Right? Uh, This has to be part of our cry when we come to know Christ. Like, hey, hey, Lord, we need you. Lord, God always always will have pity, right? If if your heart is right, he he, he wants to help you. When you say, Lord, have pity on me, he desires to help you. Verse 14, when he saw them, he said, go show yourselves to the priests. As they went, they were cleansed. Can you imagine? They weren't allowed. Okay, so (laughs) the idea of leprosy is it was highly contagious, and you were kind of banished outside the camp. Jesus tells them to go do something they should not have done that would have been illegal or wrong or maybe even life-threatening for them to do. And when they had to walk, they had to tell people, we are unclean, unclean. So people got away and didn't He says, go show yourself to the priest. 
I want you to walk back in there and go show you. So as they went, see, here comes that obedience. Increase our faith, Lord. We need to, well, you know what? That sounds stupid. We're just going to go to the priest, and they're going to they're gonna tell us to get out of the town, to go away. Uh, nothing's going to happen. But it says they went as they went. That's where their faith began to grow. And that's where God did something. It says as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, We're not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? I'm not going to preach on that. You can look up the Samaritans uh, later. And he said to him, Rise and go. Your faith has made you well. You know, there's something so powerful about our faith. And maybe the, the, the answer for today needs to be, Lord, and our prayer needs to be, Lord, increase our faith. Not only can our faith help um, uh, forgive others that have wronged us, not only can our faith help us, uh, God, perform miracles and heal what's broken and what may call us unclean, our faith can move mountains. And so that's my prayer for you tonight. Uh, I encourage you, if you're watching with someone else, just, uh, go ahead and read the rest of the chapter. See what else you can find in there. There's a lot of great stuff. If you're watching it by yourself, maybe write down a few notes uh, that just stuck out to you. But thank you for being here. Let me pray with you. Uh, Lord, we just thank you for all that you're doing. Father, for being the mighty God, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, God. And I pray that, Lord, increase our faith. Increase our faith, Lord, so we can forgive those that have wronged us. Increase our faith, Lord, so we can walk on water. Increase our faith, Lord, so mountains can be moved. Increase our faith, Lord, so you can heal what was unclean. God, we thank you, like the one leper who came back. We thank you, and we rejoice, Lord, that you love us and you care for us. God, I pray you watch over each and everyone here. Lord, keep them safe. God, I pray you give us an opportunity to share your love with someone else this week. We ask this all in the mighty name of Jesus. Everybody said, Amen. Amen. God bless. Have a great week, and I hope to see you all on Sunday. Bye.